Welcome back to the Black Hole of Real Estate podcast. This week, we are going to discuss what has taken place in the first half of 2023 and where the market might be heading. You know, interestingly enough, the conversation for what, three years, four years has been inventory. You know, since pre COVID time, the real estate space has not seen a lot of properties available when you compare it to the buyer's appetite to purchase those properties. You know, a normalized market might suggest six months of inventory, and we haven't seen that in what feels like forever. And, and even now, most markets are at one or two months of inventory, and all that means is number of homes available compared to the homes that are selling per month. Simple statistic. What we find is that at the beginning of 2023, when we compare January of this year to last year, it was almost 70% more inventory. So the doubling of inventory thought, feeling was there. Unfortunately, what's happened is as you get into May and then June of this year, the inventory is maybe 15% higher and declining when you compare the year over year statistics. And now we're looking at July and August where we could very well go inventory negative. And what that means is less homes available this July than last July. It's a real thing. It may, it may happen. And we'll know the numbers you know, shortly after it happened. Uh, certainly trending that way for August. You know, The increase in interest rates has played a part in this. The affordability of properties for people moving, you know, let's say, across town has changed dramatically because now the payments are higher on their mortgages and the cost of moving down the street or across town has got significantly more expensive. You see, the prices have not gone down at all this year. And even if experts, you know, would like to tell us that prices are going down, I don't know that that's going to happen. There's some strong evidence about the pricing that we're witnessing right now that would suggest that's not going to happen but if we go back to inventory and we talk about declining inventory what that means is that as inventory goes down it's less likely for a homeowner to be excited about selling their home and finding a new one and we've seen this for the last few years quite honestly sellers have been terrified to go on the market because they feel their home will sell quickly and will have no place to go to at least in the respect of Okay, we've, we've sold our home. We want to pick a new one that's going to be our home for the next 5, 10, 20 years. Maybe life. And they want to have options. So as you are considering going on the market and staring at limited options, you know, the what-if game becomes really, really scary. Sorry. All right, so we know our house is going to sell. What if it sells too quickly? Or what if it sells and we just can't find anything? What do we do? We don't want to become renters. You know. Do we really want to lease our own house back? I mean, it's a possibility. And it does happen in some cases, but in most cases, uh, we're finding people are going to sell a house and buy a house, you know, and do a double closing on the same day. It happens a lot. So for those that are moving across town, changing schools, districts, upsizing, downsize, it's, it's, it's a real conundrum for them to actually go on the market. So with that in, you know, in front of us, you know, how, how do we resolve this inventory situation or what resolves it, I guess? Well, as long as a thousand people a day, that proverbial thing where people move into, into Florida from other parts of the country continue, they're going to consume the appetite. And, and this is what continues to push this market in Florida, just a little bit different than most other markets. People have always moved here for the weather and the opportunity. And there's no state income tax. And then when you look at the way that certain states have navigated COVID and post-COVID times, now our market continues to look attractive to other areas where they maybe did less of a good job. Taxes are in check in, in, in Florida for the most part. And insurance, while it's gone up, is still available. There are reasons that people will continue to move to Florida and absorb the inventory in ways that are different from other markets where either people are leaving the state in greater numbers than coming into the state, or they're just stagnant where they're not actually having a lot of movement for other reasons. So the solution for the inventory problem 
is what unlocks opportunities and, and dramatic changes for future markets. But I guess the first thing we got to do is make sure that we're not going inventory negative. That That's probably the single biggest story we're going to see over the next six months is, is, is there a dynamic that changes that? We have witnessed since, let's say, November 1st, 2022. Let's call it the bottom of the market. Let's just do that. Interest rates have continued to climb. Inflation out of control. And inventory, while more, let's say in January, because if you think about the bottom of the market in November, 60-day ripple, most inventory in a long, long time happened in January, right after the first of the year. You know, that was a signal. What didn't happen was more people didn't jump in. The buyers came out of the woodwork, even though rates are a little bit higher, they consume that inventory because it's not it's not what you think. If somebody's selling in a market after the first year, maybe there's a tax reason or an economic reason or an income tax reason, there's all these reasons. They're making the move to Florida. They're consuming the inventory. And maybe, just maybe, with the rising interest rates, it didn't make that much of a difference if they sold a home for cash. You know, there's, there's no interest if you're paying cash for the home. So now with this pressure on inventory and the buyers active in the market, there's no reason that prices were going to go down. We predicted here since, you know, for the last year, prices will not likely drop. And this is not 2008, it never was. So here we are six, eight months later, interest rates are higher, inflation is higher, home prices are higher. So buying last year or even early this year was a better value, if you will, than it might be today. And it's likely that interest rates stay the same or go up. The Fed may pause, but there's other pressures on interest rates right now that you know, we're, if we're sitting at seven right now, it could be eight in a few more months. And yet with inventory going negative, we're, we're likely to see price pressure going up. It's been said that 40% of our current inventory is new homes, maybe 20% condos. That leaves about 40% of the homes out there, single family homes, which tend to be the most popular and in the resale category. So the delay of new construction is going to stretch buyers out even further. So you may notice that I haven't given you any solution to the inventory problem yet. I can tell you what I think it's not going to be. I don't think that the hedge funds are going to start offloading those properties they bought 10, 12 years ago. They're making good money in the rental divisions. There's really no compelling reason they control the asset and it's producing revenue to dividend style. I don't think that's going away. So maybe it's new construction, continues to fill the gap, or something occurs where homeowners are more willing to sell their property. And perhaps we were on the cusp of that in January when we were approaching double the inventory of the year before, but the momentum got short-circuited. And now we're back into this game of... I don't know if I should sell my house because I'll have no place to go. And it's troubling because these markets, they, they'll continue to move quickly, but for the vast majority of the people that would get into the market, they're just finding trouble finding the right house. So where do we take this next? Oddly enough, for all the complaints of no inventory and nothing to buy, we're still seeing a dramatic number of increases in certain segments of the house and housing market purchases. Now, admittedly, the data says that sales are down as far as units in year over year categories in the last couple of months, for sure. But the volumes are up because the prices continue to go higher. Truth is, I don't have a solution for you. What we can do is watch and study this market. And if somebody says, you know, are you a buyer and a seller in this market? I, I, I would be both. I'm active in both. And our clients certainly are. 
we haven't told anybody to not buy a house in this market. The investors and the flippers, they're still finding ways to get it done, but they're the ones that would most likely be neutralized in this market. The vast majority of the people that make a home purchase aren't in that gamifying of the system where they're trying to leverage something to make a profit. The vast majority of the people are first time home buyers, upsize, you know, move up buyer, downsize, which could be any number of things, you know, kids going to college, death, divorce, maybe they, they have to move on from that. You know, the groups that are getting married, blending families, you know, combining families, uh, generational or otherwise, you know, those are the people that are always going to buy. The relocation buyer that's moving from another state, uh, job transfer. These are the things that we see people move for, and they're not necessarily market condition related when it comes to pricing or interest rates or the cost of buying a home. They're the ones that when they have this desire or need to move, they're avoiding 100% interest rates, which is renting. So despite market conditions, the market continues to push forward. The avoidance of being coming a renter is a big driver. Home ownership still has some tax benefits and there's still a desire for most people you know, to at least think about owning a home. So, you know, this week I wanted to give you something that was extremely basic because the solutions in front of us are actually pretty simple. When more people decide they want to move, inventory will increase. And right now the reasons for most people to move are less compelling than they might have been in January, but that could change. So I've given you something to think about this week and what's driving this market and remove some of the emotions that you see in the mainstream media about why things are going up or down or going to crash or not going to crash. It's just a human condition of when someone is ready to move for their own reasons, that's what moves markets. And that's why this one keeps going. The rates won't slow it down, the inflation won't slow it down, and the lack of inventory won't slow it down. Not because I'm predicting it, because that's what's happened, especially since the bottom of the market in November last year. Hope you guys are having an awesome, awesome summertime and that you keep tuning in. Definitely subscribe. And if you have any comments, you know, please drop those below. This is Ron Wojcikarski for the Black Hole of Real Estate.